Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Called Bank. This is Nathan Mortensen here with Dale Harper to get into a little bit more of the postseason jazz talk. Yesterday, there was some more information released about the upcoming NBA season and the possible start date along with the schedule. So we're looking at, hopefully, a 72-game season. So that will allow for the maximum amount of games while ending it a bit sooner, the season a bit sooner, for, to my understanding, in order to allow players who want to go t- over to Japan and play in the Olympics that opportunity. Um, the start date that they're looking for at is around December 22nd to Christmas. And so that's when things start getting really crazy with how everything's been going. Since, I mean, you look at it and the Lakers and the Heat They ended their season around like October 15th. So that would give them only two week, two months of off season, but that would involve training camp in there. So they wouldn't get that long, like of a rest. And also the draft um, is going to be November 18th. So you, you can't have free agency starts until after the draft. So you'd be looking at about a month to get your drafted players up to speed, I'm guessing that summer league, quote unquote, wouldn't be happening this year. And then you'd also be looking at like trying to get players, get them to your facilities and get them going all in the space of like 30 days. So while I definitely really like the aspect of a, you know, Christmas start date for getting things back on swing and also being able to like have more basketball sooner, there's a lot of logistical issues with that. Well, and you mentioned free agency is doesn't really happen until after the draft, and that's normally a two-week period. Um, most of it happens in the first week, maybe week and a half, but still you have that two-week period after the draft before teams really have their final roster set. And obviously there might be some moves with some uh, minor trades or signings, but uh, teams like coaches won't even know who is on the, like who their full roster is until like two weeks before the season starts. So that's going to be an interesting one. At least it's everyone is at a fair disadvantage except for maybe the Lakers and Heat who are getting almost no rest as you mentioned. But this is interesting because I feel like like around Halloween is normally when the NBA season starts and I'm always excited for those first couple games to see how my how all the new rosters are performing. But then by the time it gets to Christmas, um, I I kind of stop paying attention to basketball, except for like on Christmas Day, because there's always exciting games then. But right now, like between Halloween and Christmas, it's going to be some of the most exciting basketball news. Uh, we do have about a, a little more than a two-week break before the draft, so it might be a little dead right then. But then from the draft until the start of the season, we're going to be going fast-paced of trying to analyze how good each pick was and which players each team should sign knowing who they picked. So it's going to be a lot of basketball news here for this holiday season. And then right in the middle of it, right around Christmas, everything starts up again. And so we might have a lot of extra basketball here at the end of the year. And I think it'll be interesting for the NBA to get to experiment with two things. A a slightly shorter schedule, which I think, you know, as you've watched um, load management become a thing, that if the NBA wants to be able to start maybe enforcing some rules and maybe have some stricter um, injury-like requirements, that they're going to have to move to a shorter schedule. And while I don't know if this shorter schedule will have a bit longer breaks and no back-to-backs just because of the time crunch, they will get to see how a 72-game um, season goes and possibly use that information for the future. And, well, like you said, I really like the October start date. Um, I have heard a lot of chatter about how it would probably be a lot better for the NBA to try to have a Christmas start date. Um, because let's be real here in October, you know, you're competing with the world series, not for a long time, but for a bit. Um, and you're also competing with college football and the NFL, which you never really want to be competing with because those are definitely 
um, attract like really large fan bases. And if you were to start in December, um, you, your start would be competing with bowl season and, you know, kind of like crunch time in the NFL and playoffs, but you would definitely have a lot more of the schedule to yourself of, um, to yourself than you do by starting in October. And you'd have that until April when you have to compete with preseason baseball and then the beginning of regular season baseball, which I think the NBA would win out on. And then you do also have some NHL. So I'd be very intrigued. And I guess this would possibly cause some problems with Olympic years, but to see if the NBA considers starting in December and maybe ending a bit later in June or beginning of July instead of doing what they've been doing and starting in October, just trying to have more of the um, market share on them and and get rid of the, the overlap with um, American football. That's true, because in the fall, you have Mondays taken by the NFL, Thursdays taken by the NFL. You always have a couple college games on Friday. Most of the college games are on Saturday, and then most of the NFL games are on Sunday. And so then if you want to, like, really the empty days are mon- are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday is pretty much open. Um, but then if you have, like, with most people that are sports fans in America, uh, they tend to go for the NFL over the NBA. So then if they're really diehard NFL fans and they're going to one game that week, they're probably not going to an NBA game that week. Uh, Because that that just kind of takes a lot out of your schedule, and this they really love both, so that would be interesting to see, especially since, um, mo like at least for me and the people I know, like summer isn't a huge time for sports. I do know a few like um, baseball fanatics who like they just love the MLB, but um, most of the people are just like it's dead time, and the only exciting part of summer is like any free agency move moves going on or uh the draft for the nfl which is right around the beginning of that time so uh, that would be interesting to see have have it move a little bit more into summer but you did mention the issue with olympics um so there's a lot to balance there and the nba has been doing good with the current schedule so i think this is going to be something that they'll consider but they probably won't make a huge move they might move it a little bit later in the year uh, from October to maybe middle of November or something like that. Yeah. And so like you were saying, I mean, that would be a big change and they definitely need to get, you know, the approval of the NBA players association to make these changes. And so that's why I'm really interested to see what happens since I think that the Christmas start date is maybe more of an NBA exec like type of goal. And that the Players Association really wants more of an MLK Day um, start, which, I mean, would be really symbolic, you know, with the social justice movement that's been going on if the NBA started on Martin Luther King Day. and But I'll be interested to see, since there are also a lot of players who want to go and play for the Olympics. And I don't think that the players, I don't think it would be fair to have the expectation and I'm obviously not the players, and so I don't know exactly what they want. But I don't think it would be fair if they said, we want an MLK start date and we want Olympics. I think that they need to be willing to work with the um, owners on that and be willing to work with the NBA on that because their salaries in large part are due to like the number of games played and you know how much money is being made off of those games. And if arena attendance ends up being what it looks like it'll be for next season, which is never reaching full capacity, like what's going to happen? I I don't think that people are super confident about where the salary cap's going to be. Maybe this season it won't see a lot of impact, but like next season, it's going to drop. So, and if you have teams wanting to make big decisions, like the Jazz want to sign Gobert. And um, while he definitely earned the Supermax, like that's a painful contract to sign and it's going to be really rough for the Jazz to work and keep Gobert but also be able to like keep money available to pay Donovan Mitchell in the future and to pay other players to be able to have a good core since I don't really think you've seen any teams 
well, any pl- any team sign a supermax player and then be successful just because it takes up that much of your cap and it's really hard to build a core around them after a super ma- after you sign someone to a supermax deal. Yeah, I I almost feel like the supermax is is going to do more bad than good for small markets. But as as you were mentioning with uh, the players wanting to start on MLK Day. Um, I thought it was I thought it was an interesting point because I was comparing like the NFL Players Association to the NBA Players Association, and how when the NFL, um, I think it was earlier this year, they they made some changes. So uh, one of the changes included an extra team in the playoffs, and their big pitch to the players was this will increase the salary cap, so you'll make more money. And the reason why the players approved it were because the majority of the players in the NFL aren't making much money. You have a few big name players that are making a lot of money, but then most of the roster spots are filled by people not making much. In the NBA, you have much smaller rosters and completely fully guaranteed contracts. So most people are making multiple millions, even if they're a bench warmer. And so when that vote goes through, to if they were to start an MLK day and saying, hey, we're okay with taking less money, the majority is a, like probably won't feel it as much if they take less money for a season or two. And so that'd be interesting that that might actually work in the NBA because of how the contracts and how the sport is set up. It's also important to remember that like when you think about the NBA, when you think about players like LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard and Giannis, like, all of them are in the minority. They're not like, you don't have all of those players. And it's important to remember that like rookies are in the minority. Like role players are the majority in the NBA. And that's why you have the um, salary cap negotiations and like contract minimums and things set up all the way they are. Because I mean, if someone could pay LeBron James $50 million a year, they'd pay LeBron James $50 million a year. But in order to allow for more of that pie to go to role players, like that's how everything's set up in the NBA. So, and part of the reason that the when people were talking about boycotting the NBA, you had players like Kyrie Irving and you had players like Dwight Howard. And I can't remember which jazz player came out and he's like, hey, like it's really nice for you to sit in your $10 million mansion and say you're not going to play. Like I'm making like a million dollars a year. And like, I'm not as financially set as you guys are. Like I'm going to be playing because that's what I need to do financially. And you guys have brand deals and have things that let you not play. I don't have those things. That's, that's a really interesting point. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I, I, my mind while you were talking about that kind of went off of sports and went about how, like the economy of what a professional athlete is worth and how that is so much controlled by the league itself and the rules that they implement. Um, but that's a different rabbit hole. We we don't have to go into that. That's just because I was doing economics homework last night. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, like as we said, it was proposed that we NBA starting around Christmas. The, N, the NBA players are probably looking to start a little later so we'll we'll have to follow this and and see what is actually decided but a decision needs to come up fast because if they if they wait until the draft let's say and then decide we're starting on christmas then it makes everything worse because now you have a month to get ready and so i'd be looking for a decision to be made on this by the end of the week and if it's not then it's probably starting after christmas yeah, they've promised, I believe, to have, I think from what I've heard, they will have like the start date chosen around the Halloween. So like that's the goal, whether or not it's MLK Day or whether or not it's like Christmas, it should be chosen and picked and there might still be some stuff to work out, but they have to at least get it done before the draft. I mean, you need to have the cap figured out before the draft so that teams can like be discussing trades and so that you can know kind of what you're going to be doing free agency wise since tampering is always a thing and it will definitely be a thing this year 
with the limited amount of time that they have. And and especially since most of the league was in a bubble together, so um, player, oh, yes. players might have built friendships and talked during the bubble, and so that, that'd be interesting. I, I think they were talking about earlier in the bubble that um, they were like trying to figure out what the next big three would be that comes out of the bubble. So uh, we'll see if that if that actually happens. Donovan Mitchell, Jamar Murray, Jamal Murray, and Taco Fall on the Utah Jazz. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, we did forget one of the biggest things as it relates to Utah um, on the schedule changing. Like, and it's don't hold your breath for a 2023 All Star Game in Salt Lake City, which is really disappointing. But 2021 All Star Game is almost definitely going to be canceled. Um. And then, like, does that push things back? Does I can't remember if I read that the 2022 All-Star Game was also looking at possibly being canceled um, just to try to give the players guaranteed rest or something after the craziness. I don't know. But, like, 2023 All-Star Game in Salt Lake City, as disappointing as it is, is really up in the air right now. So, fingers crossed that it works out, but not holding my breath on that. Yeah, that's kind of frustrating because the last All-Star Game was probably the best all-star game we've had since like that that one year when Allen Iverson like actually took it down to the wire and pulled off a comeback win against the West and he did that just because there's a chip on his shoulder that everyone was saying the West All-Stars were it, like much better than the East so that but that was like really the only interesting all-star game besides last year's and so I'm hoping they, like, I'd understand this year, but I hope it doesn't get canceled too many years in the pa- in the future because uh, they started to figure out something that made the All-Star game really interesting to watch. And so in other NBA news this week to kind of divert um, our current path, I think the biggest one is probably the hiring of the New Orleans Pelicans' um, new coach. And you had a couple things that you were telling me about that before we started recording and kind of your thoughts and feelings there. Yeah, so the the Pelicans, they fired Alvin Gentry and they hired Stan Van Gundy, which um, I think a lot of people weren't expecting that, especially after the Nets hired a very players coach and Steve Nash. I think people were expecting the way of NBA coach hires to go, you're going to primarily hire former players um, for teams that have potential star power like the Pelicans so that they can get them used to the role of being an NBA star and get them there. Um, but I think Stan Van Gundy makes a lot of sense because if the Pelicans roster stayed together how it is for another three, four, or five years, then it would probably be full of stars. You'd have Zion Williamson in his prime. You, uh, you'd have Brandon Ingram in his prime who... Brandon Ingram is starting to kind of get into his prime right now. But Stan Van Gundy, he's a very traditional coach. He um he doesn't take anything from anyone. He he like he's pretty strict and he runs good basketball. He knows basketball very well. Um if you remember him, he's probably most known for his time coaching in Orlando with Dwight Howard. And so I think basketball-wise, this coach, this coaching hire makes sense, but the last time that he was really working with a star with Dwight Howard, um, Dwight Howard left because he didn't get along with uh, his coach in San Van Gundy, so I wonder if... Um, I, I feel like it's, it's even more of a player's league now, and so if players don't like the coaches, they have a lot more power to force them out, and so I wonder if Stan Van Gundy, if he's going to like adapt to his role uh, and understand that to be a little bit more of a player's coach or if he's not going to and if the players are going to react well to that hiring. Uh, another interesting thing with that coaching hire was um, J.J. Redick really liked playing for Stan Van Gundy, at least from what I've heard, and he's on the Pelicans. So uh, from, what, uh, from what I've been hearing, um, he had some say in that coaching hire, so... Uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, the Pelicans definitely have an interesting roster to work around, so I'm interested to see 
what a new coach can do with all their talent. It'll be super intriguing. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Dwight Howard has made it very public that one of the biggest mistakes slash regrets he's he has is leaving Orlando. That he kind of felt like that was a childish thing to do. Um, and that he feels like his career would have was a lot better set up there and that he would have had a lot more success there. So when I look at it from that perspective, I wonder if he's going to talk with Zion at all about Steve, about Stan Van Gundy, just because like, I definitely, what I would predict is to see Stan is to see them stay there for like the three, four years on their contract on, on his contract. And then to see them switch to more of a player's coach. But I mean, who does, who does, who do they really have to impress down there when they're coaching? Like you said, if JJ Reddick liked him, then you don't have to worry about JJ. I mean, if Derek Favors stays there, I mean, I don't think Derek's the type of guy who's going to be upset with a coach like that. Like he, he played here in Utah and he had some coaches that were pretty strict from my understanding. And then looking at it like, as long as Zion and um, Zion and Brandon Ingram like make the right decisions and you know like are okay with the coach, which they should be because they're still very young players, even if they are emerging superstars, like that could really just set up like a great core to then maybe pass along to a player's coach here, you know, come twenty twenty five, and then have them, but have them built up to a good level to be able to shoot for a championship. Yeah, and I think that was the Pelicans' mindset with this hire was uh, let San Fan Gundy like get some basketball knowledge into them, have him be have them help them be disciplined so that they can really fulfill their potential, and then once he's built them into a championship roster, have him just kind of hand the reins over to a coach who can guide them to a championship and like not get in their way. Um, I I don't anticipate there to be any problems with this roster. I know I mentioned that as um, a possibility before, but I don't know Brandon Ingram. Uh, I don't know what his thoughts about this are, but and I, I don't know exactly Zion Williamson's, but Zion Williamson feels like he's a very, he's kind of a quiet character and he's he's very friendly and open to stuff. And so I feel like... Um, he's he's okay with the coach he's going to be strict and going to like push him there because um i don't think he would want to create any waves i uh, dwight howard is a very loud character at least he was when he was younger so um that might have been um like just dwight howard's personality to get upset at something like that so we'll see what happens i think it's a good hire um I know Kendrick Perkins wasn't happy about that, but I don't think Kendrick Perkins is the greatest basketball <laughs> mind around. Yeah, Kendrick Perkins likes to say a lot of things that are just outright outlandish. Like, they make great headlines, and I'm sure that the click-through rate on those is awesome. But I don't know when the last time he made a prediction when it that it actually came to fruition. Yeah, it... I've kind of stopped watching most ESPN shows because I feel like most of the people they hire are just uh, like almost everything they say is just like clickbait. So um, it's not as fun to watch. I've, I've started trying to watch like either smaller um, podcasts or shows or uh, just third party organizations that aren't like uh, the huge sports broadcasting areas because I feel like they give me better opinions and um like stronger news rather than just a bunch of superlatives. So what is the most clickbaity title we can use for this podcast this week? Um, we should say that the NFL bought out the NBA NFL. bought. Okay. No. So now that we've um, went down a rabbit hole, I think we're going to call this week's episode. Um, before we do shout out to Utah state who has their first game of the season in football against Boise State tonight. So go out, support a local team, watch that. Um, We're really looking forward to next week. Hopefully we can get a bit more into kind of the draft and where we see that going and what we think the Jazz are going to do with their pick. So thanks so much for listening. Remember to rate and subscribe on whatever platform you're on. And if you want to go check us out on YouTube, 
please do. Have a great week.